the term high functioning anxiety? Are you curious that maybe you might have high functioning anxiety? Watch today's video where I go through what high functioning anxiety really is. My name is Diana Garcia. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Florida, owner of a private practice called Nurturing Minds Counseling. All right, let's jump into this week's video. All right, so I feel like the term high functioning anxiety has been thrown around a lot lately. In fact, I was just recently having a conversation with a loved one. They were talking about it. So I figured why not do a video on it? So to back up uh, high functioning anxiety, right? So any type of anxiety disorder, actually any disorder in order to meet criteria and what we call the DSM. So it's like in a book of where we say like, okay, if you have X amount of symptoms for this amount of time, then you made criteria for generalized anxiety disorder, right? Or whatever uh, major depressive disorder. That book, right? One big criteria for all mental health disorders is, is the level of functioning, right? So that's really important depending on whatever the concern is, anxiety, depression, uh, whatever that looks like. One criteria for any of these disorders is that it's causing some type of functional impairment. Really, it's impacting your ability to function. Uh, what that looks like can really be dependent on you. Maybe it impacts your ability in relationships, work, school, whatever that looks like your daily life. You get to really decide that functioning, but there has to be some type of impact in order for us to say, hey, you do meet criteria for this mental health disorder. So to back up, the label high functioning anxiety, it's not an official disorder. Order. It's not in the DSM. I actually don't even know where that term came from, to be honest. I think it was uh, popularized by like just pop psychology. People maybe just made it up. But really going back, this high functioning part means that you might have some symptoms consistent with other anxiety disorders, but you're, func you're high functioning, meaning you're still doing really well at hitting kind of all the areas in your life that you want to hit. You're still achieving, accomplishing, meeting your goals in areas that are important to you comes to high functioning anxiety is that a lot of people tend to associate high functioning anxiety with just being high functioning in general. So maybe you're someone that tends to be more of a high achiever, maybe type A, maybe really kind of organized uh, on top of your stuff at work or school. You're someone that people can really depend on. In general, you're really dependable. So again, that piece of high functioning anxiety, maybe internally you're having some symptoms of anxiety. So maybe you tend to overthink, overanalyze, uh, catastrophize, think of worst case scenarios, but maybe you do a really good job of not showing that, uh, but internally you're really struggling. Another sign is, again, maybe you feel really tired, exhausted, or burnt out. And one of the reasons could be is because you continue functioning and not really listening to your needs, meaning because you're so accustomed to go, 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 and because you can keep that high pace, that high functioning lifestyle, you are maybe really good at ignoring your needs or recognizing that you have to build in time for self-care, whether you're really stressed or just as part of your routine. So that high functioning part isn't always the best, meaning like it comes to a cost of your own well-being. Another sign that could be associated with your high functioning anxiety is maybe growing up, you really internalize the need to achieve, produce, maybe you were the one in the family, the child who did well, who didn't cause issues. So you continue to function, you're a high functioner, right? So it's just part of your identity and putting others' needs before your own. So maybe there's a story or a narrative that since you can really achieve, accomplish, you're really good at that, like keep going and put on like the brave face, that you continue to do that even if at times you need to set boundaries or set limits or it would behoove you to put your needs first, right? Again, this can just be one story. It can be completely different. So I, I want to be clear that high functioning anxiety doesn't have necessarily have to look the same for you. It's just that piece that you experience certain symptoms of anxiety, but you're still really good at functioning. Sometimes that works really well for you. Again, that means that you have the ability to continue doing the things that you want to do. You don't, you don't necessarily get into crisis mode or anything like that. If you feel like you might struggle with some high functioning anxiety, stay tuned for my next video because I'll talk about some tips and tricks to help you deal with some of this high functioning anxiety. Another component of high functioning anxiety can be that maybe you're really good at masking or swallowing your emotions. So again, because you're so accustomed to functioning and producing and working and you can do that, you can kind of pull out all the stops. That means that maybe you're really good at sometimes hiding or not really asking for help or letting people know what's internally going on for you. Again, because that high functioning anxiety piece is that the, you're still having some symptoms of anxiety, uh, but maybe you're just not doing a really good job of letting other people know or showing that or really focusing on taking care of it, taking care of yourself or coping when you start noticing some of these symptoms. I know 
in the comments, what are some of the common signs that you really resonated? Was it the high achieving part, the not really showing your anxiety, the really feeling overwhelmed, but again, just continuing to go? What signs really resonated with you? The video was helpful as you explore your relationship with anxiety, whether you have high functioning anxiety or an anxiety disorder in general. I encourage you to watch this video next for three mind hacks to really help you when you start kind of thinking worst case scenario. And as always, I encourage you to continue nurturing your mind, body, and soul, whatever that looks like for you.